everyone welcome back to my channel the ninth cup where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose this is going to be our magic monday reading i am channeling energies for mars transiting into the sign of capricorn so we have um, several transits that have happened within the past week uranus going direct the nodes have shifted into taurus and scorpio um there was one other one I forgot what it was. We still have uh, Venus retrograde. Maybe it was that. Uh, Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde. Retrograding back into Capricorn. And um, Venus is set to go direct later this week. I'm recording this on Monday, the 24th of January. Um, so there is going to be quite a bit of Capricorn energy in the cosmos. Um, Venus and Mars will be conjoining in about a few weeks. I don't have the exact day, but they will be conjunct in the sign of Capricorn. Um, you know, Venus will be direct, but she'll be conjunct her masculine energy, her masculine counterpart in Capricorn. Mercury will be in Capricorn and uh, Pluto is in Capricorn as well. So uh, beautiful Capricorn stellium energy. So I'm just coming on today to channel energies, particularly for the Mars transit because Mars is, is exalted in the sign of Capricorn. Um, Mars rules Aries and it's the traditional ruler of Scorpio. But if you think about the components of Mars, which is, you know, being a self-starter, initiator, trailblazer, getting things done, um, then that, those qualities are exalted in Capricorn. Capricorn likes to put one foot in front of the other. Um, and this is a beautiful exaltation because it's actually finishing things through from start to finish. Um, the downside of Aries is that it will start quickly and burn out quickly. But when in Capricorn, it has this beautiful determination and, you know, resiliency and, you know, dedication that I think is just kind of unmatched um, with any other placement. So, and again, it is exalted there. So let's get into the reading now that I've had my little introduction. For those of you who are current subscribers, thank you so much for being here. Um, I appreciate your energy. <clears throat> and helping me grow the channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. I'm Karen Michelle Yearwood. I'm an intuitive guidance counselor and I help people like yourself along the ascension journey. So I'm starting out with a few astrology cards, <clears throat> really just being guided by spirit right now um, to see what our overall energies are. <coughs> Excuse me, I have Vesta. Vesta, the goddess within, your sacred spiritual center and quiet dignity. So this is very um, Mars, very Martian, right? Um, it's it's feminine energy, but it does actually make me think of a, a Mars-Venus conjunction. Um, not necessarily in Capricorn, but it, Vesta kind of embodies both Mars and Venus energy. So this could be you really going within, channeling your beautiful divine feminine, divine masculine energies, um, you know, healing those parts of yourself, um, figuring out like what is it that you need to do to kind of keep a fire burning in terms of endeavors and products you have going on? And where do you need to maybe step back, maybe be um, more um, observant, uh, take a, a break, right? That more feminine energy being more receptive, possibly to feedback or just, you know, guidance from others fourth house, the house of cancer, but this is the home house, right? The house of roots and heritage and family and home. So some of you could be, um, you know, this could be uh, lots of different things actually uh, as a general reading. So this could be healing um, like father, mother wounds or healing relationships with your mother or father, or, you know, your legal guardians, whoever raised you, the male figure and the feminine figure in your life. Um, since, and I, I channel that because Venus is retro and Venus rules our relationships. So possibly for some of you, that could be some of the relationships that's kind of at, in focus right now. This could also be flipped around. Maybe you healing relationships with your children or just having, you know, certain conversations with them. Um, Mercury is retrograde, right? So conversations could be coming up, um, around parenting, family, home, you know, parenting, your parents, being a parent. And the fourth house does oppose the 10th house, which is the natural um, house of Capricorn, which is where all that energy is. And Leo, beautiful Leo. The energy is flamboyant, dramatic, proud, and passionate. It focuses on the importance of self-belief. So <clears throat> kind of pairing with that Vesta energy we pulled first. Now we have Leo, um, beautiful fire sign. I'm a Leo moon and my, my moon is actually in the fourth house. Some of you could be like me, have Leo in the fourth house. 
where I have your Vesta in the fourth. Um, I, I usually don't pull Vesta onto natal charts when I do readings, but some of you could. Bottom of the deck is the second house. Okay, so this is our values. This is one of the homes of Venus. Venus rules the second and the seventh houses with Taurus and Libra, respectively. So it's about our assets, finance, and the things we value. So our possessions are also our feeling of self-worth, money, assets, you know, the, the physical things in life, our home, our clothes, our car, and also how we go about getting those things, right? The efforts we, we put into getting the things we value. So this could be... Um, Kind of what's at the core or at the focus like i said a minute ago with this mars in capricorn you know some of you could be possibly taking up action in regards to making more money or to relocating right mars is movement so maybe moving um relocating right moving home um or just kind of taking on a new position in a role that you're in at work or this could be more um intimate right taking on a new role within your relationships or talking about those kinds of things um leo is very much about leadership as well um slightly different than the kind of capricorn leadership um leo i think is more I think of more like spotlight, right? More like popularity type of attention getting kind of leadership. Capricorn is about like building and it's more longevity long term. So building out things that will be here, um, you know, long after you're, you're done doing the work, kind of building in like this foundation, getting the foundation in and also kind of reaping the rewards of your hard work as well. So again, this Mars transit could maybe spark a lot of that for you especially as venus goes direct um money right or wrong card <laughs> bottom of the deck second house right money could be coming in maybe things that could have been held up or delayed or blocked somehow between venus retrograde and mercury retrograde you know now maybe those things are loosening up you're getting communications flowing um, contracts are being signed uh, money that was promised things like that and especially since we have the holiday break um here in the western hemisphere right so things kind of slow down anyway that could be a part of it as well so this is beautiful energy i really like what's going on here in terms of like getting things going right getting your gears going getting um things put in place getting your planning in place beautiful energy so i'm going to use the familiar's tarot deck and let's get um Let's do a three card spread. I just want to get a good shuffle in. Let's do a three card spread on. Um, let's do current reality obstacle and how to overcome. Current reality obstacle and how to overcome. Oops. I'm using my familiar's tarot deck. So, current reality three of swords. So this could be forgiving, healing, right? Getting over any type of letdowns, disappointments, betrayals. This is like the heartbreak card, but it's in the um, current reality position. So again, maybe this is something that you're moving out of with that Mars and Capricorn, Venus going direct, you're kind of moving out of feeling stuck, feeling, you know, disempowered, feeling like, you know, in a victim mentality. I think I mentioned that on my past reading uh, about that, you know, coming out of that victim mentality, you know, I think it's titled like who or what has come back around. So the opportunity to heal, the opportunity to see your own empowerment to your divine nature, your ability to manifest, this could be what's at, um, <clears throat> at your focus right now. Um, let me get the other three, get the two cards and then I'll clarify. King of Pentacles. Okay. So this is the obstacle. Current reality, three of swords, obstacle, king of pentacles. So the obstacle could be finances, could be money. And maybe that's why at the bottom of the deck, we have the second house. At the bottom of the deck is usually things that aren't really clear or haven't come around yet. They're kind of um, in the peripheral or they're, um, again, ha to happen soon, like happen in the near future. So king of pentacles in your obstacle position is really being in that um, strong, resourceful energy. You know, fourth house was one of your overall energy. So maybe this is like, you know, Things like being behind on bills or not knowing how you're going to cover something. I'm trying to clean up credit, those kinds of things. So it's in the obstacle position. So it's kind of what has been, again, slowing you down. And this could be a combination of all the, you know, retrogrades from last year. And then, of course, the Venus retrograde this year. But I'm getting an energy of like, this is like, um, it's kind of like been a long time coming kind of an energy. And, you know, with this year, with all the transits and you doing the work, these, this is what's going to be kind of resolving itself. This is what's going to be kind of um, released and healed. 
All right, so let's see what is how to overcome two of wands. So that is the travel energy. It's also a choice, choosing to stay in a comfort zone or to take a risk. So possibly what could be coming in is an offer, and maybe the offer is to relocate, to change jobs, to change positions, some kind of change here, some kind of, um, you know, set of choices is going to be presented to you. And that could be how you basically step into more abundance, you know, how you step into more power, into more leadership, and, you know, see who you are at the core of Vesta. Let's get a few clarifiers for each. They're clarifying this Three of Swords is, that's not a real card. <laughs> um... Seven of Pentacles, yeah, patience and planning. This is the patience and planning energy. Um, Seven of Pentacles, looking to see what seeds can be planted that's going to give you the kind of rewards and sustainability that you need to go the distance. Um, it's, it's taking time out. It's kind of looking to, you know, your past to see what has worked, what has been, you know, successful for you, but also, um, you know, accepting the fact that you need to be patient to see things come to fruition and this is what I was saying in the beginning about like Mars and Aries right it's kind of quick it's kind of spontaneous it's um, impulsive but Mars is now in Capricorn so this is a great energy to slow down but also keep a steady pace forward that's beautiful seven of Pentacles energy and what else temperance card of Sag yeah so being your own alchemist taking two extremes and molding them together you know taking the things that you have been successful at, the, the lessons and the wisdom that you've gleaned from past experiences, even though it might have been painful, but that Three of Swords energy, using it to build up your character, to make you wise, to make you more resilient, to make you more steadfast. Um, and this is, you know, again, pulling to extremes and in the standard uh, Rider weight deck, the Temperance card, it's Archangel Michael and he's he has two cups and he's kind of flowing the waters back and forth from each of those cups. So it's also balance, right? I believe one foot's in the water and one foot's on land as well. So this is pulling in all the elements as, uh, as well, all the elements and all the tools available to you, earth, air, fire water and then also literally what is available to you um, what resources do you have that you can use to plan to you know kind of put things in place and yeah there's just kind of like a balancing energy here um, between like doing things that are new and then also holding on to the things that are tried and true however that works for you <clears throat> And again, fourth house is here. So this could be, you know, not just around like family, you know, like you're literally your home. This could be tied in with your career as well because the opposing energy for the fourth house, as I mentioned, is the 10th house. And that's the career reputation and authority. Second house has to do with our money. So there's kind of more things going on with that. Um, with that fourth house is what I mean. You know, because we have issues of money and moving here as well. But perhaps what's tied around this three of swords is relationship dynamics. Because I did channel that in the beginning with the Venus retrograde, like with parenting, you know, you being a parent or just, you know, your home life, your family members. Perhaps this three of swords um, could have been something regarding a relationship with a close loved one. Clarifying the king of pentacles, ten of wands. Yeah, so there's the burden, right? So this is the obstacle position, <coughs> excuse me, the obstacle position carrying too much right having too many um, responsibilities obligations i think i channeled that in the period previous reading to this one as well you know who or what has come back around uh, i think it, yeah i think i had channeled an opportunity to release burdens to put things down um so here it is again you know and maybe what has been blocking your abundance you know a steady stream of income and stability has been you maybe dipping in in too many things, um, wanting to try too many things at the same time, right? Instead of focusing in on just a few things and mastering those before going to the next. Um, or maybe holding on to too much from the past, not releasing things from your past. Um, you know, if this is not money related, if for those of you who are, you know, financially stable and successful, this could be, um, you know, related to what I was mentioning before, more about the family dynamics. This 10 of wands, you know, maybe you have been like, um, the word is parentification. So I don't know the other <laughs> the other uh, form of the word. I think it would be parentified. Like maybe you, as a youngster, you were kind of thrusted into having these um, responsibilities that are more suited for an adult. And that has created a lot of burdens within you because now 
in your actual adulthood, you're taking on more than what's actually yours. But that's because in childhood, it was like it was just kind of put onto you. So now it's time to put down these burdens, gift backed to the people, you know, that has have given you things that weren't yours, gifted back to them, hold them accountable, hold them responsible. Queen of Cups. Yeah, so this is compassion. This is going back to healing that heart space with the three of swords in that first pile. Compassion for yourself, forgiveness for others, patience as well. Uh, leading into that heart chakra, the Queen of Cups. Um, you know, this is a Queen of Cups coming out with the King of Pentacles. So that kind of pairs a little bit with the mother-father dynamic I was mentioning, um, even though they're two different suits. Um, and I think that also can help you release your burdens too, because it's like you're releasing them lovingly. You know, it's not thrusting it or pushing it back in someone's face and, you know, being in this energy of resentment. It's more about, I love myself now and I love you and um, I want our relationship to thrive and, and us to both be successful in our own ways, you know, however it resonates, however it works for you. And so now to do that, this is what is required. Okay. It's kind of like that. It's, it's, it's compassionate. It's Queen of Cups energy. <laughs> um, clarifying the Two of Wands, Three of Cups, Celebration, and the Chariot, Card of Cancer. So there's the Cancerian energy. Fourth House is uh, House of Cancer, and now Chariot is the Major Arcana for Cancer. So some of you could have strong Cancerian placements or fourth house placements, like I mentioned before. Like I have my moon in the fourth house. And the moon does represent um, mother or feminine energy. So, um, or if not, then, you know, it's just the theme of Cancer, right? Which is the nurturing, right? Nurturing uh, feminine motherhood qualities within yourself or within others around you, within your family. But the Three of Cups, the Chariot, and the Two of Wands is in um, how to overcome. It's in the position of how to overcome. So this is like really celebrating your wins and pushing forward no matter what. Choosing to push forward in a direction that you know is what's best for you. Not necessarily with what's familiar, but with what you know will bring about more high vibrational energies. Um, what will take you out of the Three of Swords, which will take you away from, you know, having to be in this ten of wands energy carrying burdens bottom of the deck is the four of swords so it's an intentional pause it's a break but it's also a four so a four is foundations it's our roots fourth house so fours are significant here as well um but yeah four of swords is like i said it's just resting it's recuperating it's not pushing yourself it's knowing that you're doing enough right it's kind of knowing you are enough and you are doing enough sometimes when we are um you know, when we have dysfunctional family households, you know, going back to this 10 of wands, we, we don't learn how to assess what our limits are, right? Like when to stop, when to, you know, when to receive, when to get, we don't know how to do that. Right. And so this is maybe what this temperance card is about with your current reality is learning how to temper yourself, temper your energy and, um, say no, <laughs> say no to people, um, and do so lovingly and, and honor your boundaries and honor, you know, your energy levels. And in doing so, you help others heal too. So this is really, really beautiful. Um, you know, with this Mars and Capricorn, I think it's ushering in a lot. I think it's ushering in a, a, another layer of releasing. Again, so more action can be taken forward, you know, more positive movement forward. 2022 is a six year and sixes are about balance. It's mutual reciprocity, equal give and take. So maybe that is what is kind of at the not just at the core of this Mars transit, but for your entire year. And this Mars transit into Capricorn is just kind of a, a chapter or, you know, a subcategory of you creating that balance for yourself in your life. And again, apply how it resonates for you. Let's go ahead and get some oracles to wrap up. Let's do Starseed Oracle. I usually don't use this Oracle deck that often, but I'm feeling like I should. Earth school, life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. Interesting. I am in higher education. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, but this is some of you like learning more about yourself. Like I was saying about, you know, coming from dysfunctional households where maybe you had to be the parent 
um, as a child. This is now you learning about how to how to have like healthy boundaries, but you know, not just healthy boundaries, but healthy, um, a healthy sense of self. You know, I, I was almost at a loss of words here, but it's like, you're going to school. You're like in this, you're like experiencing soul growth in a way that puts you in balance within and balances out the things around you too. You know, it releases the restraints the restrictions and you know, anything else that has maybe held you back by also you learning about who you are. So it's kind of twofold, you know, and the sixes are about that duality as well. Very binary. Activated earth, power places, ley lines, trust where you're led. So this is about surrendering, you know, trusting your own power, your divinity. And star bathing, light body, crystal grid, transmission, activation. Those two words speak to me the loudest here. Transmission and activation. They sound more margin, right? With activation and transmission. Getting things going. Um, and bottom of the deck, we have you're not alone. Isolation, physical connection, community. So maybe some of you, if you felt isolated in your family setting, felt isolated in um, your sense of kinship with others, this could be an opportunity as Venus goes direct, Mercury goes direct on February 3rd for that communication to get clear, to get balanced, and you know for things to move forward in a more um, connected and cohesive way, all right? So this is what I have for you. If something here resonates, like the video, subscribe to the channel if this is your kind of thing. And if you haven't done so already, um, I do hope to see you guys in the next reading and be sure to thrive. Bye.